You should seriously consider becoming a screenwriter. What in the actual fuck going everybody? I'm back for more Mortal Kombat 1 discussion. Today I'll be talking about the whole story, my full thoughts, and how it does compared to all the previous ones. So right off the bat, I will definitely say this is probably their I'd, I'd say this is, might be my favorite out of all of them, surprisingly enough. I think this one might honestly be my favorite compared to how the other ones do. And I'd probably say that mainly because of how it ends and how it also handles deaths in a way compared to like all the previous ones. I'd say that is something that it does a lot better than all the previous ones. Another thing as well though is all the characters that got chapters there's because before you had so many characters that would pretty much be jobbers throughout the story and then would not even get a chapter but then they actually give these characters chapters and it's like wow you actually gave them time to like um be interesting for a change because characters that have not had a chapter that you get to play as were baraka reptile um melina yeah melina and then yeah i think that's it yeah so those three finally got a chapter after so long because they were all present in mk9 and then went over to mkx 11 no chapter and pretty much ended up jobbing and dying or just being forgotten about in the whole story it's insane <laughs> having garris being the one who's watching over the hourglass so that Liu Kang can watch over the realms as its protector. I think that was a good trade-off for both of them, especially for Garrus now, because like he's a lot more interesting to like have for a lot more of the interactions that happen throughout the game, especially for how he helps Liu Kang at the end of the story. They definitely did a lot better with Garrus this time around compared to Eleven. But you see, you find out that everyone is living out the destiny that Liu Kang was setting up for them, except for Deng Song, who you saw, of course, in the opening, immediately met Kronika, which is going to be interesting later on when I talk about that. But yeah, so you get to the next chapter, and this is where I like, I was having a bit of issues with the chapter system, because when you're here, you know, I, I will say though, they do great with having the introduction of Tarkat. Tarkat it was very interesting, especially for Baraka, because Baraka felt so much more interesting than ever before, than just being a, a full-on monster that just wants to fight people. That was much better handled. I will, they do have him like, help a lot for most of the story, because he helps up to chapter six, but then bounces. After that, that's it. But, um, but the, the reason they end up going to Outworld, of course, like the other champions, except for Raiden, was to find out what Shang was doing. So they end up hitting his laboratory. And that this was where I start to have problems with how the chapter system is set up. So let me let me play chap this fight sequence just to show off what I mean. So pretty much. This is the main problem with chapter systems in these games. So they position it so that only one character is playable in the story, and yet all the other characters will just do nothing, and they'll just job as the one who's mainly the chapter focused on will get their time to shine, which is a bit degrading for other characters, especially because we want to see how far they come, like potential-wise, because we just see Kung Lao just like lose after being like, brain to like fully be ready for this and that as well as johnny cage so both are losing and then you just have kenji come in um and just save them all afterwards which i, I i'd say is it's really low it's low grading i it's really i really wish they changed it up a bit more because i i at least like when they had the option to give you other people to play as in the story i think that was a fine addition all right, now for the third act, it goes into two different portions where they try to fight the Deadly Alliance. So, first attempt is with the Lin Kuei, which ends up failing because of Sub-Zero. And then you have the second attempt, which is 
um, Liu Kang bringing forth outworld allies such as Sindel and ever and her family to fight against the Deadly Alliance. I will say, I am happy that they were able to at least resolve that whole struggle that uh, that, that Lee May had with not being able to protect the royal family for when Jared died. I do kind of wish though they they really didn't really even specify how exactly Jared died because they just say he on her watch he he was murdered. They don't really show how exactly he was murdered or say who did it. They, I think they could have elaborated a bit more on that, especially because Jared comes back as Ermac, which is something I was surprised they were going to do because for Ermac, one of the endings in Mortal Kombat 9 had him uh, um, have one of his souls being Jared the King of Adenia and Sindel's wife. So I was surprised that actually we finally got to see Jared for the first time in forever. Because I can't even think. What was, was Jared ever mentioned in FK3? I, don't, I, I would have to double check the first time Jared was mentioned. I think maybe maybe the 95 moon. My, my history on Jared is a bit off. So let me know like the first time Jared was ever mentioned um in story but i was happy to see that he was ermac 13 or, or the 12th chapter is melina's where it positions her as like the hero for like this final act in a way where she's the one who ends up beating the deadly alliance which is weird because you you do it on the second fight and i was like wait that's it they're done but then this is where chronica comes back into play for the story so the Chronica that you see at the first part of the story that Shang Tsung was talking to was fake. It, it, it was fake. It was a lie. They had they had us in the first la half, but thankfully, it was a it was a simulation. It was fake. It was a lie. She's gone forever. Nether Realm was just scaring us for a sec by having her come back. So. Um, the way Shang Tsung referred to her, though, was she called herself Damashi, which I do I do appreciate, though, I, uh, because uh, that's a, if it is referencing the Damashi that Shu Jingo helped in Deception, which would turn out to be Onaga. But sadly, that is not Onaga. So the real threat is the Shang Tsung from Af from Mortal Kombat 11's Aftermath. So, as you probably remember, you had two choices in Mortal Kombat 11 in Aftermath where you could either play as Liu Kang or you could play as Shang Tsung. So, I, as we probably are aware, we probably all went with the Liu Kang one and you probably really see, saw the Shang Tsung one once just to hear him say it has begun even though we already said it twice now. But with this one, you saw him, he had, he had full on power, he could, took over almost all the realms except for the realm of order and the realm of chaos, but you find out that the timelines pretty much split. So you got one timeline where the Liu Kang won and you have the timeline that Shang Tsung won. So, with this, so Shang Tsung wanted to merge timelines in order to uh, conquer this one. So that's why he wanted to take control and have Shang Tsung do it for him. So it was also funny, Shang Tsung even betrayed himself. The man who was known for betrayal and even ended up betraying himself. Something I do appreciate though, because um, this gave you a lot of uh, 3D era love with the Dragon King army. The Deadly Alliance being the main threat, as well as the Damashi twist. I, the only thing I think I'd say was missing was, of course, Onaga. But I'm hoping they, 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 they might give us something in the next one. I, I know that's like so far away, but I feel like they'll finally do it. They, we did see him, though, for Shao Kahn and Reiko's endings, but I'll probably talk about that in a later time. But for now, 
They do another thing, of course, as I said before, where everyone loses, and only the person whose chapter it is will get to win. And it's probably <laughs> even crazier, because if you look right here, it's the it's Sindel Massacre 2, and I'm pretty sure everyone looking at this was looking at it like, oh no, we're not doing this again, and sadly, we are doing this again. She down right off the bat. Like, It's at least better because no one actually dies, or one person dies. It was only Sindel, but then she just, her soul ends up going inside of Jared. This is where we go to act number four, where we have, we are able to use the Deadly Alliance. So this splits up into two fights for, or I'd say three fights. So on one side you had everyone else fighting to make sure that no the realms would not be merged on earth on Liu Kang's timeline while Liu Kang was gathering allies from other timelines as they soon find out that other timelines do exist creating I'd say a, a multiverse for Mortal Kombat and this is where I really start this is the light problem because this is where of course they go out of just like go all over the place with third act it's like i'd say that's like a main issue i've had with for a while for mortal kombat's media was how they handle the third act in a lot of the stuff they handle because if you remember for the third act in mk9 they had everyone die to sindel along with Liu Kang, MKX, you had Cassie Cage being the hero, MK Battle of the Realms, you had that full-on corrupted Shinnok 1 being fight with Liu Kang becoming a dragon. <laughs> yeah, these timelines get crazy, it's insane, but uh, I, do I do like one thing though for this chapter as well though, is you do get to use Quan Chi for this fight. You do have to use Quan Chi as a cameo, along with Shang Tsung for this chapter. After that happens, Liu Kang does his fight with the, the Shang Tsung, uh, as Liu Kang brought the allies from his timeline, or I'd say the one timelines that have his allies from. He brings back Katana, they were finally able to kiss. They brought... It's weird how they brought a version of Kung Lao, but they really don't specify um, anything about him because I'd say the only re recognizable one that felt um, interesting was of course Katana as well as Old Raiden. Final chapter? I would like to apologize. <clears throat> I made a mistake in 2022 and I didn't think this would actually happen. 2022 thing. What if for MK12 the story has Shang Tsung and Fire God Liu Kang traveling the multiverse, <laughs> gathering allies from MK movies, the Midway era, anime movies, etc. Or I guess I forgot the cetera. For an interdimensional Armageddon. And guess what? Guess what? That actually ends up happening. <laughs> How? I, I can't even be mad that I got that, but still. Anywho, you kept fighting each of them, and you reach Shang Tsung and Quan Chi as as the end, and you end up beating them with the with the whole time I'm being erased because Shang Tsung was the anchor for his era. So with him gone, that whole timeline is gone, with leaving everyone else to just be free from his terror. So. They end up ending it off where they were at, they're all at the tea house, uh, as well as you're finding out that Scorpion and Smoke are going to create the Shirai Ryu, along with, uh, along with Harumi if you looked at a lot of the other endings. Ah. I like that, I like that end, how they ended there, with them um, just like having like a chill scene, because you re really never really have that at all, you just have them all just mourning, or you just have a weird, um, an odd, uh, climax, but I kind of like the climax a bit more because of Armageddon, 
as well as it's the Deadly Alliance. Oh, and I'm a sucker for 3D era love. <laughs> but this game definitely did a lot more for writing and handling, and handling characters as well. They did so well with handling everybody else this time around. He definitely did great as the protector of the of his era. I, I feel that he did well with handling it in every aspect because he checked, he had everyone in check. He knew how to handle a lot of the situations that were happening, as well as he knew what he needed to do in a lot of the situations. And I appreciate that a lot more. I mean, he was really able to do what he needed to compared to how Raiden was handling. I know it's like a bit different because Luke with because Luke Kang was able to absorb both his power and Raiden's power, so he had a bit more power compared to Raiden. However, um, Raiden with Raiden, it was they really just made it hard for him to operate as the protector, especially with those visions he had in MK9, along with how he's treated in a lot of the other games. I, they definitely gave well, Liu Kang a great writing for a lot of the time he spent throughout the story. All right, rank it. I, I'd say it's a, it's definitely a nine out of ten for the story. Now, it's, I'd say they did much better handling compared to all the other stories. Uh, I, I'd say I'm, currently, I'd say I'm tied with the story between this and. MK9, mainly because of course MK9 covers the 1 through 3, which is why I love both, but then you have the ending, so I'd say MK1 handles the en its ending better than 9 um, in, that, uh, in that sense. Let me know how y'all feel about the story, what you wanted to see, what you didn't want to see, and what else do you want to uh, see going on for this next generation, because I do, I'm guessing We'll probably see an expansion, maybe. We might see a story expansion just because they did it before with Eleven. As well as they did tease a Titan Havoc at the end. So I'm curious on how they're going to handle that going forward. So let me know what y'all think of this story and what else y'all want to see. Thank y'all for watching uh, and be sure to subscribe for more.